Good afternoon. I can tell you all are excited to see each other. <laughs> Behind me is uh, some sort of banner that I think is probably placed that way for our, um, what do you call those hovercraft thingies that... The drones, yes, for our new WPCC drone that will fly through and take a picture of it. So, I'm not sure. It's the only thing, reason I could think of why it was lying like that. So, I'm sure there's a reason. But uh, welcome. This is the regular update that we do following the trustees meeting. The trustees meeting that was held on June the 14th, 2016. It took us a little bit of time to get back to this one, uh, but. The result is we have some interesting new things to report to you. Uh, that meeting was held in Moore Hall 275, that's upstairs, and that is the room that we're going to be using as the temporary boardroom until we find a permanent home for the trustees' meetings. Uh, 275 is a classroom. It will continue to be a classroom, but we just reconfigure it for the boardroom, so uh, don't, don't fall into the... Uh, uh, the web of, you know, that we've taken over that as a boardroom. It's still a classroom, and we just use it, uh, we just reconfigure it to use it. Uh, I do want to remind you that the camera is on back there, uh, and it's 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 scanning the crowd periodically to get reactions, and and uh, <laughs> and then we paste it together so that if anybody wants to cry on cue, we've got a few spots that we could fit that in there. But Tim spends hours putting that that whole thing together later on. Uh, we do have several things on today's agenda, and we're going to do well to get through in an hour. Uh, what we're going to do is begin with Sandy Hoylman's update, and then we will follow Sandy with uh, Jennifer Probst, who is going to give us a little information that I think you all will find interesting. Rhea will follow her, Rhea Crawford will follow her, and then Attica Simpson. And then I will come back after Atticus is finished and wrap up the meeting. So if we could get started with Sandy. Good afternoon, everyone. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> Tough crowd today, yeah. Well, it is. I think that remark about this taking longer than an hour really got him upset. <laughs> we'll try to get through it uh, as quick as we can. We uh, have several updates for you. Uh, one of the first things that I usually tell the trustees is any new or promoted employees that we have, and we'd like to recognize those again in our meeting today. First, we have Josh Berry, who was promoted to career coach on May 23rd. Josh became employed at Western Piedmont in 2012 as bookstore technician, and prior to joining the college, he worked as a cashier sales associate at SB Hardware. Josh received an Associate in Arts in Business Administration, Accounting, Economics, Finance, and if that wasn't enough, also Marketing from Western Piedmont, and then a Bachelor of Science degree in Business Administration from Appalachian State University. So congratulations, Josh. Also, I want to recognize Kirby Farley. She's on vacation this week, uh, but she began full-time employment at Western Piedmont, effective May 23rd, also as a career coach. Prior to joining the college, she worked full-time as an administrative assistant in the Office of Disability Services at Appalachian State University. She also taught seventh grade English for six years. Kirby received a Bachelor of Arts degree in English Literature from Elon University and a Master of Arts degree in Higher Education from ASU. So we want to welcome Kirby as well. If you haven't met these two, I'm sure you've seen their pictures all over the place, but they are going to be out and about and they're going to be working in our high schools uh, during the, once fall semester begins. did want to update everyone on the janitorial contract. Uh, we are outsourcing housekeeping services for the main campus and K building and also Foothills Higher Education. So we had eight vendors that came to our mandatory on-site visit. Then we had five vendors that submitted proposals. We interviewed four of those and have narrowed the search down to two. So while we're still checking references now, we do hope to have a decision made by the end of this week. <coughs> Excuse me. As part of the process, we have maintained two positions, which would be facility services aid, which will do several of the things that environmental services used to do. Jean Gaither is one of those positions, and the search committee is still reviewing the applicant pool for that second position. 
We'll move into the budget update that we have, and it has been passed, and the North Carolina Community College System is in the process of finalizing each college's budget. In summary, for uh, fiscal year 2017 over 16, we did see a total decline of 1127109 before any additions to the budget for salary-related increases. As you know from previous college-wide meetings, we did expect this and we did plan for it, so we feel like we're, we're in good shape at this point. For the good news, uh, and I do like to, it's very rare that I've been able to get up here and give you good news, but I did want to say this year that with the budget, they are looking at a 1.5% increase on our salary for employees that are employed with the college as of July 1st, 2016. And we will process that in the September payroll. Also, the bonus, there is a 1.5% bonus that's in the budget. There's still some wording to work out with the system office, but we anticipate being able to process that in November. The system office will take it to the state board in August, and then I will take it to our trustees in September for approval. If there are any changes, a memo usually comes out after that September meeting, which I'll go into more detail about any of the budget or salary related items at that time. At our June meeting of the trustees, we discussed and they approved several different items, uh, budget transfers, write off of uncollectible accounts, the travel authorization for the president for fiscal year 2017, travel policy changes, disposal of surplus items, and capital improvement projects. I wanted to go into a little bit more detail on the travel policy. Uh, Michael Bingham had sent out an email earlier uh, detailing some of that process and how we'll, we'll be using rental vehicles or we have the option to use rental vehicles. This came about because the Office of State Budget and Management developed new procedures, mainly based on the dis discontinuation of the state motor fleet that they were using. Rental vehicles, we have a good state contract. It works pretty well in the urban areas. It's a little bit of a challenge for us in the rural areas, but we will comply. So I wanted to refer you to the, the email that Michael did send out earlier in July if you have any questions. But the main thing that it comes about is if you're traveling 75 miles or more and there's not a college vehicle available, you will need to either rent a vehicle from Hertz or Enterprise right up here on Burtonmont. And we've got the process in the business office to do that. You'll need to contact Wendy Maney. Or you can take your own vehicle, but you would only get 34 cents a mile. And the 34 cents is an increase from 30 cents the trustees did approve at the June meeting. So if you have any questions about the travel, we'll be happy to go over that in more detail, but I didn't want to take a, a whole lot of time to go over it here, but did want to make you aware of those changes. I want to talk a little bit about facilities now. Um, we do have a lot of projects going on here on campus. As you know from Previous conversations, we have the greenhouse that's going up next to the K building on the Richardson campus, or complex. I wanted to show you that we are moving along with that and making good progress on the greenhouse. And the head house that you can see in the background there as well. We do anticipate this being completed by August the 1st, so that uh, we hope Chip and Megan can, can get in there and get ready for the fall semester. The Megatronics building, um, it is not a, a myth that is going to come to pass. <laughs> it's not going to be just a picture here, but it is a uh, long process, uh, mainly due to state construction. They're a little bit behind right now. But the construction documents are with state construction. They have reviewed them on July 6th. They did come back with several things that they needed changed or modified or explained. So our architects are working on that. And as soon as they get those items addressed, we'll send that back to state construction and hopefully they'll approve that very soon and we can get that out to bid before the 1st of August. LRC renovations, that is going on now. So if you've been in the Learning Resource Center, you know there's a lot of action happening over there. I want to take a moment to just brag on, on Western Piedmont employees. Uh, one of the cost savings measures that we did was we took all the books down ourselves and boxed them up and moved them. There were over 25 employees and sometimes some of their spouses that came in and helped do that in a matter of four days. 
and got it all done. And maintenance moved it, moved those boxes to several places on campus. So I just wanted to say a big thank you to them. But this is a little bit about how it's progressing. Looks a little rough right now, but it uh, is gonna continue to get better and you can see how they're using some of the colors there. Another building that we were looking at is the pottery building that's gonna be behind Ralston. If you'll recall, we moved the professional crafts clay program to the Ralston building. Um, we need to move the kilns and all of their equipment into a building that they will have better access to. So we will be building a 30 by 25 metal building that's gonna house that equipment. And it will go behind the Ralston building <coughs> next to the C building. The H building is one of the projects that we're going to use bond money for. We're going to be renovating that entire uh, first and second floor that will house Burke Middle College and the STEAM Academy in one place instead of having them spread out over campus. Part of that is going to be moving the dental classrooms, which we hope will happen next summer, but that's going to take uh, quite a bit of design there to get that up to where Burke Middle College and STEAM Academy can use it. Again, one of the things that we've talked about in recent meetings is the cosmetology program that we're hoping to offer in fall of 2017. We've looked at several different locations around um, Morganton to see where we could pit that program. This is over at the old Walmart across the bridge from where we are now. It's the closest space, and it's actually in very good condition even though it's been empty for quite a while. It will take some renovations. But the spaces that we're looking at is if most of you remember where the old Cato store used to be and the two smaller spaces beside of it. And you can see right now they've, they've taken the carpet out. It's, it's ready to renovate as soon as we kind of figure out where everything's going to go and get that designed. But it's a, it's a pretty good space and we think that it's going to work out pretty well for what we need it to do and be a, a space that's going to attract patrons to come to get their hair done as well. And that's my update and I'm going to turn it over to Jennifer. Can you hear me? Oh yeah, you can hear me. All right. And I'm sorry, I'm going to stutter and I might actually yawn because I think I have hypothermia from being in here. It's really, really cold. Um, this year, I'm going to be heading up our backpack um, initiative that we do every year during convocation. Convocation this year is going to be on the 8th. Uh, Burke United Way will be teaming up with the Outreach Center and with Walmart again for this really great effort. So once again, we're going to ask you guys if you would like to pitch in or make a donation. A $20 donation provides a child with a backpack and school supplies. Now, other than that, if you, if you want to give just the supplies, that's fine as well. I'm going to have a bin that will be out here during the convocation, hoping to keep it for a few days through that, because the actual initiative is going to take place on August the 20th, and they have extended the efforts. This is really good news. They've extended giving out these backpacks and school supplies to two different areas, the Outreach Center and Eastburg Middle School this year. So we're reaching, hoping to reach at least 1,500 school children this year. So I'm hoping that you will find it in your hearts so and you're going to find something about this again in all of your, your mailboxes. I'm going to get it all in there ahead of the convocation to give this year to help our local school children out. And if you have any questions about it, please get in touch with me. Thank you. Now Leah's up. I promise I won't talk as long as Sandy. <laughs> not that this is not going to be the Rhea show. Uh, at the board meeting, I gave a brief update of what's been going on in the academic affairs area. We talked about all the pinnings and graduations that we attended. The, you know, the month of May is quite interesting for all of us, and we, we went over all those. But one of the good things we did at the board meeting is uh, Lisa Monty and uh, Leslie McKesson presented an update of the QEP. And that was really interesting, and uh, we'll continue to monitor our progress on the QEP. I did want to make you aware of some of the events that will be coming up. You'll be getting a letter from Dr. Helmick, but I'll go ahead and mention some of them. Convocation week will begin on August the 8th. 
that's going to be here before you know it. This summer is flying by. It really is. Uh, we are going to have a little bit different format this time from what we've done in the past. We will be having a faculty meeting at the conclusion of the general convocation meeting, and it will be held in here in Leviton. So uh, it's going to probably be roughly 9.30, 10 o'clock, 10.30, something. Depends on how long the convocation meeting actually takes, and we'll meet in here. We'll also be doing the adjunct faculty workshop on Monday, August the 8th, and it is also a different format this year. Uh, we will begin the sessions in this room for all the adjunct instructors. You know, what we used to do was you, they ate first and then came in here. We're going to come in here first. And while we're in here, they're going to set up their box dinners. And the adjunct faculty then will pick up a box dinner and take it to their division areas to have their dinner and their division meetings, hopefully speeding up this process a little bit. So you'll, you'll see more about that a little bit later on. New student orientation will be on Tuesday, August the 9th. Uh, it will begin at 8 a.m. and go, 9 a.m. and go to roughly 1 p.m., something like that. I will need to ask all advisors to be in their office areas by 10 o'clock on Tuesday to uh, be able to advise these new students that are coming in for orientation. Uh, division meetings will be held different times throughout that week, but with the majority of them being on Tuesday afternoon, December, the, uh, December, <laughs> August the 9th. I'm really out of it. Uh, <laughs> last chance registration will be on Wednesday and Thursday, August 10th and 11th. So that's coming up. And then classes will begin on August 15th. So we're already talking about fall, getting everything ready to start fall. One thing I do want to mention to you is spring schedules will be due August 1st. So if you are one that works on the schedules, that will be due August the 1st. We've mentioned to you several times about our instructional service agreement with McDowell Tech, where we'll be taking our criminal justice program to them. Uh, it has, was submitted to the system office for approval, and we did receive approval on June the 22nd. Uh, Danny Dixon has been spending a, a great amount of time in uh, McDowell County working with McDowell Tech and McDowell High School on getting this going, and we're looking for some more opportunities. Well, the biggest change for our division, and most of you are aware, is we had a, re a little bit of a reorganization, and now we're now the Academic and Student Success Division uh, with both Academic Affairs and Student Services put together. And so we're real excited about this. This is a, a great opportunity for us to maybe increase our services to students and the two groups working together. I think it's going to be a really good move. We're excited about it, and you'll be hearing more about that in the time to come. They promised I wouldn't take us long. <laughs> I can't promise the same thing. I'm long-winded. But good afternoon to you all. Um, my report uh, at the trustee meeting was uh, brief, but not as, for what I'm going to tell you today may be longer, so I apologize in advance for that. It's good to see everybody. Happy summer. Um, I told the, the trustees a little bit more information about the foundation marketing and then also some IT related uh, business. Um, first of all, from the foundation standpoint, we had our 32nd annual golf tournament. Um, that was on May 2nd. I may have told you all some of this, but we netted uh, the most we've ever netted, and that was about $12,000 uh, due to the work of the team. And I appreciate many of you were there uh, to help, so thank you very much for, for doing that. Uh, these are the best results that we've had since, since we've been here, and of course that money goes to support professional uh, development, as you all know. Um, that money was, for example, that money is raised and dedicated to the mini-grant program, uh, the um, Outstanding Staff Member Award, and the Excellence in Teaching Award, all which come with monetary awards. So uh, the other thing is due to your feedback during the strategic planning process, the success of the golf tournament, the employee giving rates over the past couple of years, and then just <laughs> continued donor support from the community, we've raised the amount available this year for the mini grant programs and so we've actually got two award cycles uh, the spring 16 cycle is now an application review 
uh, and we'll announce the winners at the fall convocation. And then the fall 16 cycle uh, will kick off the end of October. And so we'll have two cycles uh, and then we'll award those. Um, those applications will be due the end of October and then we'll award that in the spring. So you have an extra opportunity for some professional development. Uh, and that's because of your financial support, your interest, uh, and your participation in the program. So thank you very much uh, for doing that. Also, thanks to Lisa for heading up that committee, uh, which includes Eddie uh, Majemsi, Valerie Jones, Ashley Wells, Lisa Childers, Linda Wright, Hope McPeters, and Jessica Caldwell. So thank you all for, for doing that. We appreciate you. Um, other foundation activities this summer is a lot of just getting ready for next year. We're recruiting, recruiting some new board members. We've got four or five uh, hot prospects that we feel really good about there. Um, we're preparing an operating budget. We've got our executive committee uh, team, uh, meeting later this month. Our full board meeting is in the uh, end of August. And then we will be uh, at the dawn of the annual giving campaign, which is right here uh, on our shoulders. But um, that kicks off in August with the board appeal. The employee giving appeal uh, will be the last week in September, and so the first week in October, if you want to put that on your calendars. Uh, we'll have our scholarship reception in October, and then the community appeal uh, will happen in December. We'll be busy getting ready for that in November. Um, so we are preparing for that. Um, from a marketing standpoint, we are focused hard and heavy uh, on fall enrollment. Uh, we've got just a matter of days, as that, as that uh, relates. Um, you know, we changed the registration period to be open throughout the summer, which I think is a really good move. Uh, I would just like to say um, thank you and way to go to all those people who got together and made that decision. Uh, we appreciate the encouragement that Dr. Helmut gave us to make that change happen. Uh, there were some challenges, but uh, we all worked together and got it done. And I thought that was pretty, pretty impressive and pretty, pretty good. So congratulations to all of you all for doing that. But the fact that we're open now is really the core message uh, behind our marketing campaign this fall. Uh, and perhaps you've seen that somewhere, perhaps you see it now behind me. Uh, that is a banner, it's not a runner. Uh, even though I had it out in the lobby and some people came in and walked right through it and over it and across it, but hey, whatever. They, maybe they know that enrollment is now open. So um, <laughs> anyway, that sign is something that I just uh, picked up today and I didn't intend to leave it here, but I decided to. I brought it down here because this is the biggest place where I could prove it to make sure everything was spelled right. If it's not, don't tell me. But uh, I'll take that to the electric department uh, tomorrow and they're going to hang that up in downtown Morganton over the next week. And hopefully we'll be able to uh, have it the next week. I don't think we've done that in a while. I know we've done it before, but it may have been like in the late 70s. Uh, so we're going back to Going back to the old, old times, I guess. Um, we're also doing other variety of marketing outlets, newspaper radio, we're in the movie theaters again, we're doing some internet radio, uh, we're doing email blasts, and we've got TV spots going <coughs> this year, which is the new endeavor for us uh, over the past four or five years. We haven't done that, so we're trying that again, and that will be on the Charter and Compass uh, networks here in our area, so be on the lookout for that. And that, uh, that piece, by the way, um, is a 30-second spot of the video that's on our homepage, which was the video that Jonathan Crumpler and his students did for the QEP. Uh, so it's such a great video. We're trying to leverage that and use that in multiple outlets. I'm not sure if you've noticed it, but I asked Kathy to bring the, the website up. <clears throat> I think I've, I've talked about it before, but I want to continue to talk about it because we've made a lot of improvements on this thing. Um, and Kathy, can you, or Sandy, can you scroll down a little bit? Was your... But you don't want to look at it. <laughs> um, just scroll down just a little bit. Hopefully what you'll see now is more images, there's more, more uh, multimedia, there's more value add messages like the top five reasons you should choose to come to Western Piedmont. Um, and all of this work, David Biddix has really been the key to it, but all of this came out of what we did with the strategic enrollment management plan, uh, or the SEM plan. So. Um, I think we're making some progress. Our goal there was to be a little more competitive and compelling against our neighbor or our sister institutions. And we'd like to think we've made, we've made some progress. We still have more progress to make, but um, I would like to point out one thing. If you go to the um, programs of study page, um, click on that, and then you're gonna scroll down to <coughs> the DEET page. One of the things we're trying to do is have more program specific pages and content that really supports the spirit of the, pro of the program. Keep going. I think it's down below. 
medical office. We do have a lot of programs. Yeah. Um, this is the goal. This page looks great, I think. Uh, it's got some visual things that engage you uh, in what's happening. It's actually moving video. Um, I just can't think of a better way to present what this program does. If you scroll down into it, it gives you more specifics about the program as far as what you can do with the program, how long it's going to take you, what kind of jobs you can get, how much you can make uh, in that area, uh, examples of the types of things that you'll do uh, or learn. And then at the very bottom of the page, there's a contact form. So it's an action that somebody can take from the actual page. And so when someone completes that contact form, which is now populated throughout the website, that form will go directly to Jonathan, the program coordinator, with a copy or a CC on student services and Jennifer. Uh, and so now we have a trackable or a way to track the contacts that we're making uh, with prospective students. Uh, that's the good work that came out of the SIM plan. Someone asked me, give us an update on what we're doing with SIM. Well, here's a great example uh, of what that plan produced. And David Biddix has worked with uh, a lot of people, but he's really at the core of that. So I just want to say thank you to David. And I hope that's something that you all um, enjoy and proud of, because we're certainly proud of. And if nothing else, maybe it sets us um, part, apart from some of our sister, sister institutions. Um, and I encourage you to take a look at it. This is, this is probably one of the better program pages we have. But we have some really good pages um, with criminal justice, uh, the paralegal program, uh, and the list goes on and on. So. Anyway, I hope you enjoy that. Uh, one other thing is I don't, the community report is now published. I may have mentioned this before. Hopefully you all have a copy of this. Did it get in your mailboxes? Do you remember seeing these? Uh, if you don't have one, let us know and we'll certainly have some out during the convocation. But uh, one of the things to notice about their community report, it is, it is designed and structured based on the new strategic plan. We have five major goals from the strategic plan, and that's what the sections of that annual report are based on. So it will show you, for example, in the student success section of the annual report, our community report, what we are doing to support that goal, what progress we have made, and what progress we're going to be making uh, moving ahead. That's a little bit different way to approach the community report, uh, but we feel like that's a, a better way to do it because it shows what we're doing to meet our strategic goals. Um, information technology, I talked a little bit about those guys. Obviously, they play a critical role in what we all do every day to uh, day, to day um, from our desktops, <coughs> telephones, uh, computers, tablets, phones, everything. Uh, they, they currently manage over a network of over a thousand computers with staff, Tim. They've got uh, a lot of projects going on, especially in the way of moving and relocating people. Uh, that's going on uh, almost daily or hourly. I really appreciate the good work that Kyle, Candace, uh, in Virginia are doing. Thank you all very much. I know it's a lot to do, especially when this is the time that you're trying to update your software and all the computers uh, in the labs and the classrooms. So I appreciate that. We have a new email service out for our students, which is consistent with the email service that we all use. That should make it easier for us uh, to communicate with students. Um, and that is due, in fact, to the, the good work of Keith Strand. And then Tina Stewart has been heavily um, involved in helping to support students and employees, for that matter, as they're trying to learn a new system. Uh, so we're really proud, proud of that. Student self-service that some of you may have heard of at this point is a new um, service that we're providing to students. Uh, it's basically a place that they can go to help manage their, their, path, their student plan as far as an academic pathway, manage their financial aid, uh, their billing and the registration process. Uh, we hope to have that up and launched soon. Um, and Nancy and Valerie have been doing a lot of work on that. We'll see a demo of that pretty soon. But I think that that gives us another tool uh, for our students that will make it easier for them to manage their programs or their experience, but also another way for us to communicate with students. Uh, we're continuing to upgrade network infrastructure, especially from the Wi-Fi standpoint. Um, and Tim is helping a lot with that. Also, just like to say thanks to Tim for recording these events and then posting them on the internet, especially for those of us who can't be here. Uh, and also, 
for those who can't remember, for those of us who can't remember what we said, we can go back and see what we said, um, which has been helpful. Uh, and then, of course, at the leading the way is Jim, uh, and I appreciate what you're doing, Jim, uh, with your team. Um, Jim's been with us for quite some time and continues to do a good job there. Uh, final update that I have uh, is one that you're obviously all aware of, but I'm uh, really uh, excited to be uh, leading the Division of External Affairs and Workforce Development. Um, I'm really stoked about it, to be quite honest with you, especially about uh, building a new team in my area as far as bringing on a new assistant as well as a new uh, marketing and development uh, director uh, with challenges brings new opportunities, and this is going to be a great new opportunity. But I'm really charged to work with the existing teams that we have, uh, especially in Lee's area, and many of you are here, but Rick and Eddie and Mike, Diane, Steve and Terry, um, I'm looking forward to the future with you guys. I think we've got some, you guys do incredible work. My goal is not to mess anything up, which has been my directive uh, from Dr. Helmick, which I will follow. Uh, and so <laughs> I'll try my best not to do that. And then of course, the remarkable ladies uh, and gentlemen, uh, full time, sorry Wes, I was gonna leave you out, didn't I? Uh, that Joy uh, leaves leads in the career uh, and college readiness area or department, so I'm excited there. I'm making my way around uh, as much as I can to meet with everyone. I'm uh, really excited about that because of all the good work, because there's so much potential uh, moving ahead, uh, and so I look forward to that, and I look forward to bringing you more updates um, from the new Division of External Affairs and Workforce Development. So that completes my reports. I hope you all have a good afternoon and a good evening. See you around campus. So glad you all clapped for Atticus. His feelings get really hurt when you know. <laughs> but uh, I would recommend to you all that uh, you not blink too much around here. As you can see, a lot of things are happening. They're happening very quickly. Uh, if we're going to turn this institution around, and I'm talking about from an enrollment perspective and a budgetary perspective, we're going to have to do some things. So there's a lot going on. I think there are more building projects going on on this campus slated between now and Christmas to either be starting, wrapping up, or um, uh, in the middle of the process than we've ever had on this campus at one time. And that's a good thing because uh, for the future it's, it's going to bode well for us. Uh, I'll move on with the, the rest of the update from the uh, trustees meeting and also give you my comments and, and then we can wrap this meeting up and you all can go about your day. I uh, do want to begin by uh, saying congratulations to Kathy Freeman who is retiring August 1st. I did not see Kathy come in. Is she in here? Nope. Okay. Uh, Kathy is retiring uh, August 1st, and uh, we will miss Kathy. She's done a great job as Director of Nursing, and uh, we are actively looking for someone to take her place. We do have an interim that uh, uh, named, and we'll tell you about that later. Um, we do have two new trustees uh, who have joined the, uh, the Board of Trustees, and then we have some other interesting things that have, have happened. Uh, Kim Kling, who is with Morganton Federal Savings and Loan, uh, was selected by the county commissioners uh, to fill the seat that Elsie Childers had. For those of you that remember Elsie Childers, she has, and if you've been here, you should remember her. She's been on the board for 32 years, uh, one of our longest serving board members. Actually, Mr. Carr was the longest serving uh, board member. He passed away about a year or so ago. He was 50 years on the board. But uh, Elsie did serve as a former Western Piedmont board chair and also president of the State Association of Trustees. So she had quite a long career. She did not seek reappointment. Uh, she did not fill out the application and seek reappointment. Uh, but then again, Elsie is 94, I think. So. <laughs> Uh, John Mercer, Mr. John Mercer, who is with Carolina's Healthcare Morganton, I think I got the name of that institution right, the hospital, uh, was appointed by the governor uh, to serve. He is replacing the vacated seat of Ronnie Thompson. But hold that thought for a minute, because Ronnie Thompson was appointed by the school board to serve out the remaining seat of Mr., or the remaining term of, of Mr. Bill Allman, who resigned earlier this year. You all probably remember that we did mention that uh, Mr. Allman retired due to ill health. And then Mr. Bruce Hawkins, who is the chair of our board, was reappointed uh, by the school board to serve out a full four-year term. So there were actually one, there was actually one more appointment than normal this year. And uh, so we're fully vested with, with all of our trustees and, and we're headed forward. Uh, we're gonna do the organizational chart next. This is phase two of the reorganization plan. <coughs> As soon as Kathy gets that up, and I'm going to get my little cheat sheet here. The 
purpose of reorganization, as we have gone over before, uh, is to improve the organizational efficiency, improve communication, improve collaboration between the divisions, refocus on strategic goals of the college, and enhance the student experience and redistribute duties. I hope that you all are realizing when you see what we have done and you've heard the various vice presidents get up that we're actually moving to a more efficient model. This kind of fills in some more of the details that are there. and uh, But a uh, few things that have happened, of course, the large division uh, that has changed, uh, the president's direct reports. You will see that Atticus's uh, duties have changed. Uh, President of External Affairs and Workforce Development. Uh, Sandy is Vice President for Administrative Services and Chief Financial Officer. She did not change her title. Rhea is Vice President for Academic and Student Success. I also have two other reports. Uh, Susan Burley, who is the Director of Institutional Research and Evaluation, has been reporting to me for some time. And then Lisa Miller, who is Director of the Grants, Development, and Administration, is a new direct report to me. And of course, Kathy Durham, Executive Vice President to the uh, executive assistant to the vice president. We might make you executive vice president. Um, she is the other member of the four members of the senior staff. So uh, four members of the senior, senior staff, the three VPs, and then the executive assistant to the president. So that's the way that the, the major change uh, looks. I want to go to the next slide there ahead of me. Academic and student success uh, now has three curriculum divisions and uh, student services. Administrative services, um, oh, well, we're going to get to that in a minute, but uh, there are the three divisions that, uh, that we now have, um, excuse me, the four divisions that now report to Rhea Crawford. Uh, we will be adding an administrative assistant position to that, and Christy Farley will continue in her duties as coordinator of academic programs. And then you can see that the new division names have changed. Uh, Anne Marie McNeely is the Dean of Arts and Sciences. Leslie McKesson is the Dean of Business, Public Services, and Academic Support. Michael Daniels is the Dean of Health, Engineering, and Applied Technology. And then Susan Williams is moving over as the Dean of Student, Success, uh, student Services. Excuse me. Next slide, the uh, administrative services uh, and chief financial officer, uh, Sandy's doing that. Hasn't changed a great deal. Michael Bingham is controller. Uh, David Wells still in the manager of the bookstore. Lisa Sessions still doing human resources. Uh, Ronald Gray is doing director of facility services. That is actually going to change a little bit um, because we have now brought the uh, custodial services under uh, Ronald. So that's a little bit of a change. And then uh, Scott Curley is uh, uh, safety and security. And then contractor services that you see out there are things like the, uh, the um, uh, bookstore and also the uh, food services that we have on campus. Did I leave anything out? OK. And she starts whispering to Kathy, I think I left something out. So external affairs and workforce development. This is this is the, probably the biggest change that we made. Um, Jim Coleman, of course, is continuing as the dean of information services, and then we've got uh, marketing and development. Uh, the director position is vacant, but coming under that is uh, digital media. Uh, the print shop has moved from administrative services. You notice that it used to be over there; it's now here, and then the foundation is under that. So we are currently looking for a marketing and development director, someone who will then have under his or her um, authority, those three positions that you see there, and then workforce development and continuing education with Lee Kaiser's area has also had a few changes that we talked a little bit about. But that's what uh, Atticus's Vice President for External Affairs and Workforce Development uh, position looks like. Then the Arts and Sciences Division, we'll go through these rather quickly. Uh, we want you all, we wanted to show you all this, and these slides are available on the internet, so if you have any questions, but this is where people have shuffled to. Two. Um, Mark Pellet is uh, Department Head for Social Sciences, and then Jerry Adams is Department Head of English and Humanities. You'll notice that's a little different than it used to be. Uh, Shannon Kincaid, Department Head for Sciences, Tom Frost, Mathematics, and then Naomi Roberts is uh, Developmental Education, and uh, Ashley continues as the Division Assistant there. And uh, yeah, 
I want to make sure we're on the same page. Leslie McKesson's division is now called, uh, and she's the Dean for Business, Public Services, and Academic Support. Star Brown is head of the Department Head for Public Services. You'll notice that division looks a little different than it used to. Uh, Terry Allis is Department Head for Business and Distance Learning is now under that area. You may recall back a few years ago that distance learning was under the business area and uh, the Dean was head of business learning, but we have put that under Terry Allis's area. The library uh, has moved under the uh, Public Services and, and Business Division. Um, Nancy Daniel continu continues in, in that capacity. And then QEP has also moved under that. So a little shifting around of, of, of those areas. And then finally, Susan Williams, uh, Dean of Student Services. Don't think there were a lot of changes here. Uh, career and Testing Services, uh, Annette Joy is doing that. Carla Lanier is doing uh, Disability Services. Jenny Patton is the Director of, did you change that one? No, you're one behind. I skipped it? Well, we'll go back to it. <laughs> In a minute. I'm already into this next slide. So, uh, Jenny Patton is, is the director of... What? Thank you. Um, Jennifer Propes, director of enrollment management. Dory Barron, financial aid. Uh, Joan, Records and Registration, and then uh, Mo Schwinn is Title III Coordinator. Now we can go back to the other one, but I'll have to find it. Or read it off that. I'll read it off this. Uh, Michael Daniels, uh, Health Sciences, uh, Engineering and Applied Technology. And you can see what we have up there. Department have applied technology chip, uh, chip hope. That's a switch from ways that we've done it in the past. Uh, engineering is a separate division now. Um, basically, we've somewhat divided that based on which campus you're on, quite frankly. And then Kathy Freeman, we still have her listed as director of nursing, even though I announced earlier she's retiring. And then Cindy Konarski's doing uh, the other health sciences areas, including therapeutic recreation. I have no idea what happened to that slide for me. And then. Uh, you can move on to information technology. There it is. Okay. Uh, network administration, Keith Strand, uh, computer support, Kyle Miller, management information systems, Nancy Norris, and then uh, Tim doing media services. So that has not changed dramatically. Okay, good. That's my last slide. Uh, workforce development and continuing education. Uh, Rick uh, first continues as customized training, Eddie McJimsey, Small Business Center, Mike Willis, uh, Emergency Services, uh, Diane Ramsey, Allied Health and Emergency Medical Program. Steve Warren is now, with BLET, is now under that division. That's a change. Uh, Terry Adams uh, is a new administrator for the Bridge Program. The Bridge Program is uh, that program that we work with the prisons on doing uh, a variety of projects with. And then Joy Buff continues as a uh, career and college and career readiness, which includes uh, everything that you see there, uh, which is a whole list of things. So that's that's the, uh, the quick version of that. Again, if you have any questions about um, any of that, it is on the website. You can go out there. We have done the corrections, so I think that, uh, that we're in good shape. I will tell you this about the organization. We've done a lot of reorganizing here, and if this doesn't work, we will try something else. Uh, this is not chiseled in stone someplace. Uh, this is our best attempt at doing reorganization. I have done it this way at other colleges. We didn't just do this on our own. We actually went to other colleges in the state to look at, at other models before we chose to go down this path. It was a lot of work, reflects a lot of work on a lot of people's parts in order to, to make this happen. Uh, but I will also tell you that this finishes reorganization for this year. There is no phase three for reorganization. We have had it filter back to my office that people were concerned about phase three. There is no phase three. Uh, if you will recall, and we can go back because we record these sessions, what I said is there may be a phase three. There is not. We think that they will stay just the way they are um, for the foreseeable future. We do not expect any more budget-related budget related reductions in the staff uh, or faculty. That 
that we think we have solved all those issues for this year. We now have a preliminary budget, we, preliminary only because it has not been approved by our trustees, but we have the information from the state. And we're on solid ground. So we, we made the right moves. Uh, we did lose a few positions. We've also taken money out of some other areas. And we're in good shape. In fact, we're starting to loosen up a little bit and not be quite so anxious about things that are going on. Uh, someone mentioned something about offices. There are a lot of offices that are moving as a result of the reorganization. So I would uh, encourage you to check before you go visiting uh, to make sure that that person is still there. IT is, is doing a great job of getting phones back where they were, but be on the lookout for changes and, and, and if someone has disappeared, don't assume they don't work here anymore. They just may have moved their office. Uh, but uh, work with us as, as we rearrange these offices. We're going to be continuing to do that. And that will continue for some time. I will tell you that as we shift things around and as construction occurs, there will be some offices that continue to change. We're not going to ask people to, to change too often. So if we move your office one time, we'll leave you, we'll leave you there for a while as long as we can. Uh, it is some good news. It appears that enrollment is heading up. But I do want to tell you that we're not out of the woods yet. Uh, we have continuous enrollment. We, uh, for those of you that have, have been observing, we don't just open enrollment for specified periods of time. Once we opened it, uh, starting with the summer enrollment, we have left it open. And it appears that that is, is bearing fruit for us. We're, we're already seeing that the numbers are starting to climb. Uh, I'm encouraged uh, when I get those. Uh, Susan Burley does a great job of giving us that information in chart form. And, uh, and so we are continuing to see the enrollment go up. Uh, we did have um, enrollment that went up slightly in, in the summer, not in headcount, but in FTE. And that's partly, primarily due, I would say, to the fact that we're now getting paid for all the courses that we teach. So looking forward to the, to the fall, um, it is uh, it's looking good so far. We do have a magic number that we're headed for. Uh, really what we want to do is stabilize and begin to head back up in the other direction. Talking to other uh, presidents across the state, they're beginning to see somewhat the same thing that we are. Some are actually uh, already uh, increasing their enrollment. We don't want to go back to double digit huge increases that just strains us and we because we are funded behind, it makes that difficult. But single digit enrollment increases would be great. That's what we're going for. But uh, one of the things that I would ask you all on the faculty curriculum side, uh, be looking at offering more classes next summer. We need to look at expanding our offerings. Some colleges got out ahead of us this year and they did offer more. We probably could have increased enrollment if we had had those classes in place, ready to go, and, and, and been able to promote them. Uh, we're doing a great job. You know, what Attica showed you with the promotion, uh, we're, we're really doing some cutting edge stuff at this institution that other institutions are starting to look at to copy us. So um, just want to uh, let you all know that we are headed in the right direction, but it's, we're not quite there yet. Uh, also, continuing with the update, we did have a list of legislative priorities that we took to the legislate, legislators this past year. These are this come out of the President's Association, and we do work on those for a period of time. We ask that uh, uh, to retain some of the management flex loss that every year that we get. And for those of you that don't remember what that is, they give us a budget and then they take a portion of it back. And we ask to retain a part of that. Uh, we also ask for additional provisions for equipment needs and provide funds to help retain faculty. Um, Sandy covered a lot of the specifics, but we did not do too well with management flex or the equipment part of it, that uh, they, they didn't give us quite what we asked for in, in those areas. But, you know, we're doing okay. Uh, the one thing that was quite a shock is the legislature forgot, yes, they forgot to put $10 million into the budget uh, for salaries that was approved in the long session. We had plans for some things that we were going to do internally with that money. And for those of you that don't remember, there's a long session and a short session. This was the short session. The long session, they voted $10 million for the first year, $10 million for the second year, but they had to approve it the second year. They got so excited about giving us the 1.5% increase and, and the management flex increase that we got, which was smaller than we asked for, that they forgot to put the $10 million in. The net loss to the system, and that's not $10 million to us, that's to the system. Uh, the net loss to the system was about $4 million, I think, somewhere in that neighborhood overall. They did give us permission to use the management flex to do some of what we were going to do with that $10 million, but somehow we came out of it 
losing $4 million. The interesting thing is that we got a legislative IOU that we will not forget you in the next session of the long, uh, the next long session. So we may have to help remind them that they said that, but we're hoping that the next iteration of the budget, which doesn't happen for next year, it's the year after, remember, uh, that we maybe will get something positive out of that. So it's about time to start giving the community colleges back. Uh, we, have, we have really taken it on the chin uh, a number of times. I will tell you that K-12 system and the university system did fared far better than we did uh, this year. We are excited about our new um, system president. Uh, he has a great track record in working with the legislature. We have suffered, and I'm not being critical of any of our our interim president or the past president, but we've we have suffered from that time lag in there, not having someone firmly at the helm. With uh, whenever interims don't get paid much attention to, I guess is what I'm trying to say by the legislature. And even though George Faust did a great job, they can sort of push him off. And uh, but. I don't think we're going to be able to do that with Jimmy Williamson. I think that they'll be paying attention to him, and uh, I'm hoping that he will be able to, to carry our cause forward. Um, a couple of other things from the trustees meeting. They did approve changes to policy 1.15 and 1.16. We are continuing to revise the policy manual. We will inform you as those policies change. We basically, in 1.15, I think it is, we revised uh, the uh, changes to the accrediting agencies and substantive change. Uh, kind of a boring policy, but we just cleaned it up a little bit. Substantive change was stuck in an odd place, so we took out some language to make it stand on its own. Uh, we also deleted the policy on the institutional motto. Uh, we have not used an institutional motto here in a number of years. We, we moved to something else, but it was holdover from years ago. Um, few other things that are going on beginning in the fall, I am instituting another group designed to deal with issues on the campus and to help improve communication. So we will be setting up a President's Council. It's going to convene for the first time in late August and it's going to con it will include a host of individuals who will gather to discuss pertinent issues that are going on around this campus and then take that information back to the divisions. It's it's sort of like senior staff on steroids, that we're going to take the senior staff and expand it greatly to bring people to the table so that uh, we have an opportunity and a forum to discuss those issues. If you have been concerned that your voice is not being heard, uh, there will be surely to goodness somebody on that committee, which will consist of about 20-some people, to. Um, to listen to what your concerns are and to take them to the group and that's what it's for it's a sounding board decisions will not be made at that at that group they will be um, discussed and then we will take them back to the areas that make those decisions borrowing that process by the way from the institution where i worked in in tennessee so it's well established that that it works at other places um, as i said people who are going to be on that will be based on what their work areas are. So we're trying to get equal representation from, from all areas across campus. I plan on visiting some of our uh, academic success classes that we have uh, in, in the fall. Uh, I've already visited one this, this past summer. Uh, or this summer, and uh, what we're going to be doing is I'm going to go into those those classes and meet with the students. I've uh, given up on people inviting me to their classroom, so I'm going to barge in uh, with some announcement. Kathy will be uh, setting those meetings up. I figured that's the one group that I could uh, could come into. I'll be there to give a brief five five minute or so uh, speech about the college and what the president does, what he doesn't do, and then ask for any questions that they may have. Uh, if you want to get in ahead of the game and get your, your class on the, on the docket, let me know. Uh, I will be, I am planning to visit all seated classes and then we're going to do something uh, of a video nature uh, that will be available for the online classes and then I will make my uh, email available for students who may have questions through the, uh, the email, for, or excuse me, through the uh, online version. I'm going to continue with the breakfast or lunch, depending on which one you get invited to, uh, with the president. So if you have not been a part of that activity in the past year, we're going to try to get everyone in in the fall. The people who met with that, we've met with 30-some people now. Uh, in, in the spring, we met with 30-some people. Um, seem to like it. They seem to enjoy the opportunity. Uh, you know, I'm continuing that quest to get people to share with me to tell me what's going on, and um, and I'm going to continue with that. And uh, 
So uh, look for the invitation if you have not already participated in it. It's, it's kind of fun. And uh, we'll mix the groups up. So if you've done it before and we start back over again, Kathy will be looking at mixing those groups up. And, and the deal is that if you get invited and it's not convenient, you can't come, you don't get written down in the book somewhere and, and negative things said about you. And uh, it's just, we understand that schedules sometimes don't work. Now by the fourth time, you know, we'll see. Uh, I think we all know that it has been a very tough uh, spring and a really busy summer. Uh, I think most of you are aware that the economic challenges faced by this college have been huge. They are unprecedented. We have never had a 30% budget cut in five years, and that is what has hit, hit us. Uh, I do appreciate your support. Many of you have been very supportive of, of the decisions that were made, and I will tell you that the decisions that were made by senior staff um, were not made lightly. And, and when I say senior staff, I also mean the deans and others. When we have to make these decisions, but we made those decisions based on what we felt was best for this institution. The institution has to survive, and we have to serve our students. So uh, I want you to realize that I think sometimes people think, well, they just made that decision on a whim. They are very carefully thought out, researched decisions that we make. And if you don't believe me, you can ask institutional research because we've been wearing Susan out asking for data, and we've been wearing other people out asking for data to make sure that we were making the right choice. But as we are moving forward, I'm going to ask you all that we all work together. The reorganization is an attempt to improve the student experience. That's the bottom line. It's not here to make my job easier or your job easier. It's here to make the students um, experience better. We have to retain students at a better level. We're actually doing pretty well, but we've slipped a little bit. And most importantly, we have to increase those graduation rates because that's why we are here. We will be looking to simplifying as much of the process of registration and graduation and everything else that goes with that in the forward and, and as we move forward. We do need you all to be focused on increasing enrollment and, and retaining students. So at the end of the day, here's what I want you all to ask yourselves. What did I do today to help the college? And then I want you to say, when you're out there and you speak about the college, will this help build stronger ties to my colleagues and help students be successful? And then third, this is starting to sound a little bit like a rotary meeting. Finally, before you act, ask yourself, will my actions help change students' lives for the better? So morale is everyone's issue at this institution. So you are either improving morale, you are making it worse, one of those two options, because there is no middle ground when it comes to morale. If someone says something negative about the college, say something positive in reply. Try to be a beacon for this institution, not a shadow. So I am asking you all in this room, and anyone who is listening, to improve morale at this institution, not to tear it down. We're going to meet again on August the 8th, and that's our annual convocation. It is different than it has been. Uh, it is done in request to, uh, uh, from you all to change the way that we're doing the kickoff ceremony. If it doesn't work, we'll go back to the way that we used to do it. It is a little bit different. So we'll be having that morning kickoff that starts at 8 o'clock. You're going to have a time to socialize. It will be kind of a light and formal breakfast. You're welcome to come here, see your colleagues. And that was the request that we had, as people wanted more of an opportunity to socialize. And then uh, on Friday, we will have a picnic, which will be out over at the LRC area. And you'll be asked to participate in that. Uh, it's just like we do with graduation. We want to see everyone there. You'll be getting letters in the mail uh, or in your box here. We just want to make sure that everybody has the opportunity to share with us. Several other meetings are going to be scheduled on August the 8th. Uh, check your email. Check your email, email often. This is more for the people who are at home and possibly viewing that at home. So I'm very hopeful that this is a year that we start to see things turn around at this institution. Uh, it has been quite frankly, four or five tough years for this college. Uh, we have been experiencing enrollment drops, and enrollment drops mean that we have been experiencing budget drops. I don't like that. Nobody likes to say no. We're all here to make things better and to improve things. So this, I hope, is our year. But it's going to take you all, all of us, working together. And, uh, and I think that we can do this. In fact, I'm very confident that we can do this if we work together. So I'm going to dismiss this meeting right, at, right on time. And I'm looking forward to seeing you all again on August the 8th. Thank you.